so let us start with let us start with sorry let us start with the personal half period zones half half period zones so what are what are these half period zones exactly so according to huygens wave theory of light according to huygens wave theory of light the light sources sends out waves in all directions isn't it isn't it so we have different theories of light one one thing like you know huygens has huygens told that you know the the source of light sends out waves in all direction isn't it the source of light the source of light sends light in all directions in all direction isn't it isn't it so the locus of all the ether particles vibrating in the same phase are said to be in wave front isn't it so every point on wave front sends a secondary outlets isn't it so personal try to calculate the resultant intensity at, in, at every point on the wave front by dividing the uh, entire plane wave front into different zones and these zones are said to be half periodic zones isn't it so friction uh, what does this friction, uh, frictional has taken yeah yeah frictional the scientist frictional has taken a plane wave front of you know this is what a plane wave front so let us suppose a b c d b and f a wave front so mark it as a b uh, c d so this is you know a plane wave front plane wave front right so let the source extended source be this is called of extended source and from this extended source this plane wave front forms you know different concentric circles and the distance from where let us you know that this be a point p over here this is the center point and this is up distance p over here and if you take the other circle this is some of land and the other will be of Isn't it? Now let us mark this point as O and this point as P. Now what is OP? OP is wave normal. Wave for normal wave front orbital is normal normal wave front. Fine. Now the distance between op is let it be of p and if you look at the the path the difference the path difference over here let it be circle mark it up let the radius be m1 over here and this be of m2 and this be m3 or let me make it as mn that could be right Sorry. So this is what this. So let it be of M N, right? So the path difference over is of lambda two. Therefore, this distance O P is P, and uh, P M one comma P M one could be how much you know? P plus lambda by two, 
and p m two will be of p plus two lambda by two, and p m three will be of p plus t lambda by two, and so on. P m n will be of p plus n lambda by two. So let me let me take two concentric circles so that we can understand it somewhat better. So this is somewhat point P, right? And this this is how the figure is made. Isn't it? So the area this is this area is called half. Period zone. So this area is called half period a zone. And so this is circle one and zone one, and this is of zone two. So the area between zone one and zone two. This is what this is this area. Is called you know first half period zone, isn't it? If you consider one more circle over here around this, somewhere like this, therefore this area is what is known as second half period zone. Period. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the resultant, uh, uh, yeah, let us calculate the path difference and phase difference. <coughs> the path difference over here is once it is of lambda by two, and of phase difference will be of phase difference is but you know of uh, phi is equal to you know two phi by lambda into lambda by two that is of phi so phase difference is phi but phi now on what factors on what factors this depends no, on, yeah. on what factors? Raise my pen. Yeah, on what factors? The intensity, the resultant intensity, the resultant intensity. Varies, varies, varies with, varies with first. What is that area of the zone? And second is of. Uh, what's the second one? Second is of average distance of the zone, and third is of of oblative factor. D factor theta n. So this is what the angle A over here is of theta n, right? So, so let us discuss in detail how the resultant amplitude varies. So the resultant amplitude over here varies directly. It is directly proportional to the area of the zone. So resultant amplitude, we, what, what would be the resultant amplitude? So let us discuss how the res resultant amplitude we made, isn't it? So 
the resultant amplitude is directly resultant amplitude is directly proportional to the area of the the area the area of the zone fine now let us draw the figure ones so this is one and this is two now so where is the point p over here let us suppose this is radius of this circle and this is radius of this circle so this radius be r n and this radius be r n minus 1 isn't it so this is how the figure work out isn't it so so now we have to calculate this area now we have to calculate the area of the zone okay fine now for that what we can do is so mark this point as O and this is M1 and mark this as M2 and this distance will be of P isn't it and this distance will be of P plus lambda by 2 and this distance is of P plus 2 lambda by 2 well okay and this distance is of p fine well so from figure so from figure uh, o m1 whole square is equal to m1 p whole square minus o p whole square for the first circle so it will be of you know base difference and so this pi and pi gets cancelled and we left with o m1 whole square is equal to what is this m1 square actually m1 square is of p plus lambda by 2 whole square minus this is of p whole square so this gives us uh, somewhere p l lambda plus lambda square by 4 which is approximately equal to pi p lambda so therefore o m1 is nothing but you know pi p lambda so what is o m this is what the radius actually here so this is the radius of the first half period zone. Similarly, similarly, we go with O M two whole square as equal to M two P whole square minus O P whole square. So from pi over here, so part difference and this will be of pi and again this cancel. Therefore, on simplification, we get as 2p lambda and O m2 will be of root over 2p lambda. For the nth nth ring, for the nth zone, typically this could be of you know root over np lambda. What is this? Np lambda. Now, now the second factor. What is the second factor? Second factor is of average distance of a zone. So average distance of the zone. So again, let us draw the circle. So this is one radius, and this will be the other radius, isn't it? And this is point P. So this radius is of you know mm, the r n minus one and this is of r n minus r n and this radius is of r n minus one okay, wait let me 
employed properly. So this is the circle of radius. This is P. Take me one more color. Let me use the other color. So this could be of radius. So this, this is one radius. That is Rn. And this is the other radius, which is Rn minus 1. Now, if I complete this, this is one triangle and this will be one and this distance is about p plus lambda by two and this distance is p plus lambda right otherwise what we can do is yeah what we can do is like so this would be you know r minus one isn't it isn't it? so let us this is r and not radius right so this will be of p plus n lambda by two and this will be typically p plus n minus one lambda by two now average of these two gives us like you know p plus n lambda n lambda by two plus p plus n minus 1 lambda by 2 upon 2. So on simplification, somewhere we get p into p into, it's not into, let me place this. Uh, yeah, this is you no know, p into uh, calculation it will be 2 n minus 1 lambda by 4. Now the third is what's the third one? Obligative equity factor which is theta n. This is a function of f of theta. So let it be a function. So if I if I just uh, draw a small this is what the obliquity factor tells me. And this angle is of theta n. Okay, so the amplitude of nth zone, the amplitude of nth zone, this means some pi into somewhere p into 2n minus 1 lambda by 4 by p. This is P plus, I guess, yeah, P plus, yeah. So P plus 2N minus 1 lambda by 4. So this gives me into lambda F of theta N. So which gives me some pi into lambda into F of theta N. The order of zone John, John increases, so f of theta decreases. So this is all about, you know, the fictional life discipline.